This is Tales of Swordfall. Episode 26, Treasure Trove. Hello, I'm Paul. I am the DM, and who am I with tonight? Hey, I'm Gats Righteous. I'm going to be playing Tyrkir Floki-san, the Rogue Scout. And I'm Guy, and I'm playing Nork Valtspur, the Halfling Monk. And I am Varen Butterfly, playing the human-ish sorcerer slash rogue Marianne. And I'm Ammon Barnhart playing uh, Ash, the Fire Genasi fighter. Cool. So it's been a little while since we've actually played, even though people have probably just listened to us just last week and are all caught up. But in reality, <laughs> it's been about two weeks. A so, long two weeks. A long oh, yeah. two weeks. There was a plume of black doom cloud flowing through the air which destroyed our minds oh, for two weeks yep. so, damn sorcerers <laughs> yep. freaking, it wasn't mm. my fault yeah. <laughs> so actually getting to the things that Rianne did and what is her fault and what isn't uh, we'll talk about last game and the game before that uh, you were all in the town of Bramby Clearing um, it was on fire um, people rushed in to help to put the fires out, um, and you guys found out that, um, having someone who is fully enraged and with a cloud giant strength potion, uh, in their system was a really bad idea. Also, uh, tainting the, uh, refugee camp's water with a bunch of truth serum which also made everyone very angry was a bad idea and uh mm -hmm. ultimately it seemed like nork got blamed for most of it was on uh in a court trial and then uh kobolds attacked and you on guys... the plus side he didn't end up wanted yeah yeah I... amazingly he, he was relieved of his crimes apparently because you know after the kobolds attacked i uh, you well we said that uh, Tyrker and Mantis went off ahead of you guys. Well, you guys, everybody remained in, um, Ash and Rayanne and Nork. I can do this tonight, I swear. <laughs> um, those three uh, tried finding ponies, and ultimately, um, what, you in acquired... One pony named Candy Floss, who was the carnival pony, and then um, Rand just decided to ride Herberta. Yep. yep. All that trouble and um, yeah. And Ash decided to be like, nah, I, I can't ride a pony. I'll crush it. I'll be on my feet. <laughs> All because of Rand wanting to be lazy. <laughs> And uh, so you guys decided to take a rest outside of the town so you didn't have to deal with anyone going crazy on you again and again. And um, that's when Rianne took a nap, had a disturbing dream. Nork took a nap, had a nice dream. And Ash stayed and watched. But you guys uh, ended up healing up and uh, started traveling down the long path to Longborough. Um... As night was just hitting, you all encountered a bear. Rand tried to intimidate it, and then Rand suddenly had a um, frightful visage about her and basically scared off everyone. And we left her alone. You with... pansies. Well, I mean, Nork didn't get frightened. But... That's right. It was Candy yeah, Floss. Horse is riding. Yeah, Candy yeah. Floss. Candy Floss. <laughs> That bear and I, though, we're just booking it. Yeah, you are best friends oh, yeah. in fear right now. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're just like, uh, yeah, and Ash is just like, nope, 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 out of here. <laughs> nope, right out of there. 
Um, but let's deal with uh, Tyrker and what he has been doing for the last few hours of his life. Um, okay. So Mantis somehow um, convinced you that going after the Kobold wizard sooner than later would be the best thing. Yep. And you guys leave town. And once you get mm -hmm. to the edge of town, there's a robed figure. Oh, good. <laughs> and they motion Mantis to come forward. But not me. Nope. Tyrker is just standing there, and uh, they have a conversation, or at least you think it's a conversation. There's a lot of, like, eye contact, but no words speaking, sp spoken between the two of them. Uh, can I, uh, I mean, it's up to you if I can even interact with this point, but can I roll insight to see if uh, this robe guy is either someone I recognize or means me harm sure yeah <laughs> insight is a good thing okay i'm not the best at it also you can do perception as well i would love to do a perception yeah wow those are both really high rolls so 21 and 23 yeah um, wh what in this <laughs> insight wise you can tell that mantis is pretty much tolerating this guy's presence and it's kind of like when you see a coworker that you don't really like on the streets, but oh. you know you kind of have to like you know face value oh, some niceness. Hey. Yeah. Oh hey, how's I'm already getting back to familiar conversations? Yeah. <laughs> um, but you do notice that both of them have the same religion, uh, religious symbol on them, mm. for a old one. So they okay. probably work for the same dude. Which would explain they're probably TKing each other right now. Yep. Message. Okay. And uh, so after a few minutes of conversation, Antis comes up and apologizes. I have to do something else now. Tigger just looks really confused. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and that's basically all you get is, hey, I have to do something else now. And yep. uh, she walks up to the robe figure, and they, the robe figure opens in a portal, and they step through it. And Tigger's, once again, just kind of left someone, somewhere with someone opening a portal. This is... This is a theme in his life, apparently. Tucker lets out a big sigh like I just did. And, uh... Well... I felt a bit safer traveling with, uh... A meat shield. I guess I'll go back and find the others. And... But... Okay, time is confusing me a bit. Yep. So, um... How long has it been since we stepped away from the others, basically? So you um, pretty much traveled out, I'm going to say, for about an hour. Okay. And, and um, you know, you knew they were going to get, like, some kind of uh, animal to help, uh, you know, just rush them along. So... But you didn't know any other plans from that. Uh, so what would Tyrker do in the meantime? Because this is really the only path to uh, Longborough. Well, I mean, I'm assuming we've slowed our pace since now I'm just standing there. Mm -hmm. uh, I would be trying to, I don't know, just be doing scouting stuff, like trying to see if I can tell how long ago or how fast or any type of details about numbers, whether they stop, do they seem tired, um, stuff like that. I mean, 
depending on how good of a scout Tierker is, he might even be able to tell, like, um, if they're prepared for the long journey, if they're not, how frequently they travel these paths, etc. And which they are we talking about? Are we talking about the Cobalts? Cobalts, Cobalts, Cobalts. yeah. Okay. Uh, give me, give me a survival. That's like, that's everything under survival right there. Yep. So that is what I'd be trying to determine. Ah, oh, it's a terrible roll. Um. So, yeah. since you guys left, like pretty much a few minutes after the retreat, um, it didn't stick around for any celebration. You also, you guys didn't stick around from, um, for like choosing ponies and stuff because you two were pretty like self-reliant um mm -hmm. and the tracks are still pretty fresh uh the basculus well they're giant lizard things with six legs so they're they left a lot of prints yeah. um you know that you're probably at least like well depending on how long you have stood there but you were at least a half hour behind them okay So, so, I mean, as I, I said, this is the only path to Longborough, so if, if your friends somehow take another path, that would be quite a miracle. And you, you've you already seen how Rayan and uh, Nork function with paths, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'm pretty quick. The ponies are going to have are going to be quicker. Um, so they should catch up at some point. So it's just a matter of, do I go back? Do I wait where I am? Or do I kind of tail this party of kobolds until it seems unsafe? Um, in an hour... Can I ask a meta question? You can say no, um, but how much time has passed for them <laughs> without um, me? How much time? So if we were doing a cut and back scene, yeah, um, you know, at, at the end of like um, Mantis leaving through a portal, uh, they would have been leaving town. Okay, so they're they're gonna catch up fast yeah All right. but then we like nap for two hours or an hour or something yeah well either way uh you also know that since it's winter it's gonna be dark within the next hour and a half to two hours yeah um a smart thing to do then would be to kind of backtrack slowly and see if i can find everyone since I'm alone. I'll do that. Okay, you start backtracking. And, um, you notice that in the ground there are some fresh bear tracks as well. Hmm. Interesting. Yep. And, yeah. uh... At least interact with those uh, bear tracks. Could you repeat that one more time? How does Kalise interact with the bear tracks? I'm curious. Uh, she, like, her eyes focuses focus on the bear tracks as she starts uh, sniffing them. I'm just imagining Kalise as like a Totoro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Googly eye into focus for half a moment. Yep, okay. basically. And uh, once she's done smelling it, she starts just rolling in whatever is available to roll in. Okay. So, Elise wants to smell like this. Got it. Yep. Uh, so, you start backtracking. starts getting dark. And uh, you notice that in the distance, um, after it gets like very dark on this path suddenly a weird blue 
light emanates from above the ground. Is it on the path? Yes. And as you see that, you hear quickened uh, footsteps. Okay. And then galloping hooves. Like there are creatures trying to get away from this light. Creatures are fleeing from the light. Yep. Okay. And coming your direction. How far away do they seem? I know they're fast approaching. I, I, I'm going to say you probably saw this from like two to three hundred feet away, maybe a little bit further. Okay. Well, I'll uh, I'll step off the path and, as a scout would, kind of hide in the bushes and see who the hell is running my way. I don't know who it is. Kirk doesn't. <laughs> Ash! So for one solid minute, you are running away from Rayan with the bear. Uh, what's Ooh. your what's your speed? Uh, thirty. Oh. So yeah, you. I think the bear runs a little bit faster. Yeah, oh, it should. Yeah, yeah, it should. Uh, let's see. They run about forty. Yeah. So like. At first, you guys are, like, running, for lack of a better word, shoulder to shoulder, and then it picks up speed. And Tyrker, from your position in the bushes, first you see this, like, grizzly bear run for its life. A few seconds later, it's your new companion, Ash. Ash, second runner-up in the race. And, okay. and leading from behind... Is Norik holding on to dear life on this pony? <laughs> this poor dumb pony that didn't ask to be a part of it. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and Norik's just shouting, you know, trying to pull on a rein, shouting, Stop! Stop holding it! Uh, give me Hold a... up everything you can to try and get the pony to stop, but it's frightened. Uh, give me an animal handling check. <laughs> oh, these are Ooh, not very good. always so good. <laughs> Let's get it out now. Get these out now. Uh, so, Candy <laughs> Floss, being a very dumb pony, uh, starts veering off toward the side of the path. Um, actually, probably almost directly toward Tierker. I yeah. Would it be fun if Tyrker takes this moment to try and calm the pony and not scare it while popping out of a bush? Yes, please. <laughs> Alright, I do not have the best, but I'll try. <sighs> that's that's better. That's that's Dude. better. <laughs> it's it's um... does, the, does the pony at least slow down enough that Nora could hop off? <laughs> yeah. I, I, you like since this pony's like usually pretty chill. And uh, it doesn't take too much to coax it into stopping, especially when there's a little, like, owlbear in front of it, too. <laughs> and uh, Candy Floss stops in its tracks and starts walking backwards, which is kind of odd for a pony, but... <laughs> So yeah, Nor Nor definitely hopped off at that opportunity, and uh, he grabs the the reins from the ground and and tries to um, direct the pony back towards the path. Um, and I'm guessing Norik noticed Tyrker by now, and yeah, um, yeah, uh, Tyrker kind of like appeared, probably from nowhere, but. <laughs> Kalis, that's the name I was trying to think of. Tigger and Kalis. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Gonna gonna try to um, hold uh, the pony. <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, well, you see, uh, uh, Rayan, I mean, there was a bear, and just help me hold this thing. 
Yeah, he'll, you know, try and help you hold it. I saw the bear. It ran faster than you and away. What are you doing? What is going on? Okay. Uh, a bear appeared. It started running towards us. Um, I, I, I tried to yell at it to, to get it to stop. And it didn't work too well, but Rayanne did it too. And it worked so well that it um, scared uh, Ash and uh, my pony. And they were both running for their lives. Thank you for listening to Tales of Swordfall. Please consider listening to these podcasts. Welcome to a special episode of Where the Wild Things Roll. My name is John and I will be your host and DM for this 5th edition actual play Dungeons and Dragons podcast set in the world of Ravarna. This podcast might be a tad different from others you've listened to. The two players will be my 12 year old son Kinnick and my 10 year old daughter Kaylee as they learn to play D&D through their very first campaign. We will pick up with our adventurers as they finish their time at Paduke's Adventurers Guild as they take their practical exams in dungeoneering, magical beasts, weapons and armor, puzzle solving, diplomacy, history of the world, and magical cause and effect before they are set out into the world. Can our two adventurers pass their classes and become full-fledged members of the Adventurers Guild? You'll have to tune in and find out next time on Where the Wild Things Roll. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe.